take Virat out and he's probably the the pick of ODI batters the last eight to ten years. He's filled up and paid the price. Yeah, well, Rohit, what has he got? Three double hundreds in the international cricket, so pretty much picks for himself. I think all these guys will probably pick themselves uh, in this team. You might look at his form and think, oh, he's probably maybe not going as well as he usually would. You know, he'll turn up the next game and, you know, look like he's playing a different game with cheat codes on. Oh, that's a nice stroke. You can bowl a maiden to him, think that you're on top and then the next over you bowl to him, he'll take you for 20 or 24. That little box becomes so small where you can land the ball. Put so much pressure back on the bowler of, you know, if you're a touch short, he'll pick you up for four or six. He defends for one down a third man, you get straight, he hits you over square leg for six and you get full and he drives you, so he kicked it super simple, but he's got answers for, for most things. Few people in the world play this better than Rohit Sharma does. He's, he's willing to play it off the front foot sometimes too. I, I think he's the best um, one day opening batter in the world. He such a beautiful technique, uncomplicated. I think he's someone that scores quite freely without that much risk with his sort of, um, yeah, the way he plays. And he's quite hard to stop because he plays just conventional cricket, but he's able to hit, um, you know, balls that other people are defending. Um, he's able to hit for four or six. It's the motive moving forward, or I guess the theme moving forward that you want to play a brave brand of cricket. We've seen it with England recently. Um, Things can change very quickly and I think Rohit's someone that can definitely do that and he can take the game away from you so quickly as well. You know, the only good part about Rohit is that he doesn't sweep a lot. So there's sort of one area you can bowl and try and limit his scoring, but if you just miss that area, on a good pitch, um, it's going miles. Um, you can't give him his arms, you can't let him hit you back over your head. So basically you're trying not to let him hit you into the sight screen. That's your number one goal. Uh, you hope that there's a little bit of spin in the wicket. Um, and there's something in your favour, because if there's not, it's, it's going to be tough. Yeah, what a player indeed, Quinton de Kock. Very often he gets on if he could have to fly it. Again, just a, a damaging left-hand batter at the top of the order. Um, very fearless, very fearless player. Bowled a lot to Quinny over the years. We're pretty much the same age, I think. Got him a few times, he's got me a few times. So, <laughs> the ledge is pretty, pretty even. I just think if you're picking a partner to go with Rohit Sharma, a left-hander that hits the ball over backward square, he calls himself a, a nicker, a nudger, but he's definitely more than that. He probably comes at you a bit more uh, once he's sort of faced that 15 to 20 balls. He can come at you and, and really put, put you under the pump, put some pressure on and score really quickly. The shot that everyone notices is that pick up shot sort of off the top of the stumps that sort of disappears over square leg for six. Um, yeah, he's pretty intimidating sometimes. Oh, shot. he's so good. He's so good there, Virat Kohli. Obviously, yeah, probably the best one day player to ever play the game, so he's a lock at number three. I mean, <laughs> I'm not even sure if I should answer the Virat Kohli one. He's, he's obviously having great confidence in his skill set, but understanding the game and knowing and understanding what bowlers who can get where you can get them, and when you've got every shot in the book, it makes that a little easier. Kohli oh. does a pan you if you don't mind. Oh. He moves beautifully from ball one, where some guys maybe take a few balls to get into their innings. I mean, just his ability in white ball cricket to have precision, touch, but power is has been his biggest asset. There's normally two fielders in one day cricket that you'll see a lot. You'll see a mid wicket and a cover. They protect the inside ring. And there's guys in the deep protecting them. Veracol is one of the best I've seen at missing mid wicket and cover by a metre. That gives them a four or a two option just about every time. He's someone who thrives on the big, big games, and I think in a in a World Eleven team, in a World Cup, he's gonna he's gonna be your best number three there. Wins games off his own bat all the time, particularly when he's chasing under pressure. You know, he's the ultimate player in in one day cricket. Um, his tempo, his ability to go up and down the gears, fast or spin. Ah, he, he's massive, very intimidating to play against. A bit like how what MS Dhoni was, the way he can time his run chases, no one's been able to do it as well as he has. A lot of the times you're, you're weighing up the risk versus reward and making sure that the run rate required sort of staying controllable and at that sort of reachable mark where you're never sort of falling too far behind, you control the tempo of the match and he probably does that better than anyone. He is the master of the chase, but it won't mean anything to him unless he sees his side over the line. It feels like he's bigger than cricket at times, you know, and in India he is. Barbara's arm on 50, away over the leg side, clears the rope. Much needed for the visitors. 
number one ODI cricketer in the world for a reason. <laughs> I think that's pretty much enough said. He's probably a little bit younger than the other guys. Um, he's sort of following in the footsteps pretty quickly behind Virat. You know, he's, he's a few runs behind, but he's, again, his numbers are unbelievable. Very similar. He doesn't always bat the same as Virat. For some reason, he feels like Virat in a lot of senses, just when you watch him play. Oh, I just think the way he goes about it, very much, very similar to Coley. Um, very hard to keep him contained to dots. Um, he rotates the strike extremely well. Um, sort of look up and he's at a run a ball and... You know, he's got a bit of a lower bat. He sort of stands up on top of the ball a little bit more. And he hits quite straight and where, you know, Coley and Steve can tend to, you know, hit a bit squarer where I think he's quite, you know, he forces the ball down the ground um, really well. It's probably his weakness early. We used to bowl quite wide to him and he'd probably more in test cricket, nick, nick to the slips a few times, but I think in one day cricket in particular, now that's any width is just put away with authority, so it's um, a real strength. He's got the innate ability, I've seen it, where people bowl a nice channel ball and he sort of gets on top of it and smacks you through anywhere from mid off, through cover, through point. And a lot of people are trying to get ones off that ball. Or try, he's just got these fast hands that smacks it and he finds gaps between point and extra cover for four. Beautiful player of the ball, excellent player of spin. He's got all the attributes too. So um, yeah, it was a toss up. I think, does he normally bat, what is he normally bat for Pakistan? Three? three. Yeah. yeah. Three or four, I couldn't put a three because of Kohli. So I slid him down to four. He's so versatile. He's got, a, he plays a high tempo game naturally. And, and Having played against Baba on wickets that don't bounce, you know, when you're going to India for a World Cup, there may not be too much bounce towards the back end. He's just, he, you almost feel like you don't know how you're going to get him out.